Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Tech Tips with Tamara. My name's Tamara Russell and I'm the host of the blog Mrs. Russell's Room, First Grade. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to utilize a digital paper, um, how to download it, how to unpack your zip file, and then how to actually implement it into a product. So I, what I've done here is I've brought us to my Teachers Pay Teachers page. And this is my All American Chevrons and Stripes freebie pack. So here you can see there's four different types of digital paper and what you do once you get online is you just click on download now and that digital paper will get downloaded. And once it gets downloaded it's on something called a, it's in something called a zip file. You'll need to have special um, software on your computer that will download, uh, or, I'm sorry, unzip a zip file. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to open it up and over here you see it says extract all files. This is how you're going to be able to get to the paper. So you're going to click on extract all files and follow the extraction wizard commands. Click on next again and it's going to tell you over here to show extracted files and you want to be able to see them. So now I'm working with this and why I like to see things um, as thumbnails. I'm going to put this as a thumbnail instead of as film strip. But these are all of the different things um, that you get within this particular pack. You're going to get the four papers, you get a button, you get a preview file, and then you also get the terms of use. So let's break down a little bit um, of what you're going to see within this pack. The first thing is your preview page. Now your preview is going to give you um, a snapshot of all of the different types of paper. Then you're also going to get a button and it's really important to utilize that button in your credits page. What I like to do with a button when I'm um, you know sharing on my thank you page, I like to put, add a hyperlink to that button so within my PDF so that folks can click right on it and go directly to the same resource that I use so it makes it easier for somebody to get some of the same things that I have. Last thing I wanted to explain to you is the terms of use document and this is really important guys. Um, any teacher blogger, teacher artist that creates paper, clip art, fonts, borders is going to have a terms of use and you really need to follow what's in the terms of use. Not every kind of digital paper or font or clip art is going to be able to be used for commercial use. So you need to make sure that you read carefully and find out what is the intent um, of the particular digital paper or font, what have you, that you purchased. Here, I have a sample page that has a digital paper as a background. Then I've layered on top of that a, um, a frame from in the Enlightened Elephant. There's two different fonts there, freebie fonts that I got through TPT. And, um, or I'm sorry, one I think is from Lettering Delights and the other one is from Jen Jones. And then I've also got the clip art there from KPM Doodles that matches with my digital paper. So in order to make cover art, the first step is that you're going to go to a new slide and I like to do everything in PowerPoint guys. I think it's much easier to manipulate. I'm you know, not a word person or a publisher person. I'm a PowerPoint girl. I'm going to come over to your new page, right click, format that background, click on picture or texture fill. And you can see here that the last uh, thing that I used is what's going to come up first. But if you don't want to use the last thing you, that you used before, I'm going to click on File, and it's going to bring you up to, um, you know, uh, probably my pictures or my documents, something like that. Then I can come in here, I can click on something, and it'll automatically change the background that I'm working with. And from this point then, I would just layer on all of the other pieces that I'm working with. What about when you're wanting to make a manipulative? There's all different kinds of shapes that you can use within PowerPoint. And what you would do is just fill that shape with your picture. So here, I have just a card that I might use in a sort. So I would first create a shape. This For this next shape, I'm going to make a circle. Maybe I'm making a, a chip of some kind. And so I'm going to right click, sorry guys, right click, format shape, and I'm going to fill it. 
Maybe I don't want to use this one, so I go back to my file. I find something else that I feel like will suit this much better. I change my line style. I like it to be about five points, nice and dark for people that are cutting it out. And I'm going to go with black here on this one. And then now I would just layer my, um, you know, my other pieces onto it. So I'm going to go to picture and I have a specific file that has all of that on it. Let's go into my borders and I'm going to pick this one because it's round too. Make it a little bit smaller. And I center that up like that. And ta-da! I have a background. I have layered that with a border. And now I can put text in the middle if I'd like to. I'll put that in here. And then if I also wanted to add a clip art to it, I could copy this, paste it here, and probably make it a little bit smaller just like this and it's still seasonal it's still festive it's adorable and so that's how you use digital paper within your products to either use a background or within the manipulatives for your products i hope you guys have found this helpful um thanks so much for coming to visit me i think my followers are the best followers in the world so thanks so much for your support guys have a great day Bye bye